What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. We're going R-rated again today because we have another event that's been canceled due to the coronavirus and it kind of affects even Sega overall as they were looking to make some pretty big announcements there and they might have a plan possibly for next month, maybe doing their own direct style presentation. It's, it's interesting, we'll go over that today. And then also we have to talk a bit about Stadia because we did see the Final Fantasy XV challenges. I don't know if people just didn't play it when it came out. I didn't even think about it when it came out, uh, but people started playing it now and it's it's pretty embarrassing what was put there. We're gonna, we're gonna go over that and even how some of the fan base is now attempting to make Stadia better because Google hasn't really moved on some of the features. And also the Xbox Series X, it, we're getting a lot more information about it as we head towards its launch, certainly more than the PS5. And it looks like another feature has been put out there during an interview. We'll talk about what that could mean for the system going up to its launch with hopefully some games even revealed soon and how it could affect those games. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below as we head towards 400,000 subscribers. And we're gonna start today with the new Samurai Jack game that should be coming sometime this summer and after seeing the, the initial trailer I was pretty excited I, I wanted to see more about it right see some maybe some more lengthy gameplay like a sit down session of like 20 minutes would be awesome just see them kind of playing through it but it does look like it's going to be at least from what I've seen so far better than the than the last one we had, which I think was on the GameCube. I remember renting it, I think, or playing it at a friend's house, and it wasn't great. It was definitely mid to below average. But during a panel, the creators talked a bit about that and why they're making a Samurai Jack game now, saying, for me it was, are we gonna do it right? Are we gonna have a full commitment? You don't want it to be a cash grab, right? That's the worst thing. If it's done and approached from the right point of view and the folks at Adult Swim were always so supportive and I think they wanted that too. They didn't want it to just be opportunistic. So I think for me, if it came from a sincere place, then it was time to do it. And that was from the series creator during a panel. This is Gendy Tartakovsky just talking about how they want to make a good Samurai Jack game, not just make a Samurai Jack game that they think will sell just by the name and we'll put it out there and it'll be just this basic game and you know we'll sell it for like 30 or $40 and we'll move on. It sounds like they really want this to at least be, I will say good, but we'll see more about this. They talked a little bit about why they didn't want to make it 2D or 3D as well, saying they thought 2D would have been a little harder even with what they had in mind for some pretty unique and large worlds. So yeah, the more I hear about this, the more interested I am. Just gotta see that gameplay. Also check your local Walmart now because they may have accidentally put that Animal Crossing switch out. Yeah, someone posted on the Animal Crossing subreddit showing a picture of them holding the box that they bought from Walmart, which I assume the system's in there and then they didn't just get an empty box or mock a box up or anything. We're going along that at least. But yeah, it looks like Walmart sold the Animal Crossing system early. And I tend to believe this because Walmart sells a lot of things early when it comes to video games, either the game itself or systems and uh, the Animal Crossing system being sold early doesn't shock me in the least for Walmart to do that. Now the game isn't in there, it's just the system itself. So I'll have to wait till the 20th for that, but the system looked pretty cool. I know Nintendo did an unboxing on their channel, but I wanna see it in person because I do think the colors scheme might not come through the, the fullest on camera. That's kind of a, those colors are kind of tough to really convey unless you see it in person. So I still wanna see it in person, but uh, it at least looks pretty cool from what we've seen so far and maybe you can get it early if you stop by Walmart. Oh, and Mario Day is tomorrow. That's March 10th, of course, March, 10, Mario, yes, you get it, okay. Uh, there are some sales going on on Nintendo's site now. Just thought I'd bring them up just so you don't miss them. I will admit it's nothing too crazy really, but here are the sales that Nintendo has on their site now. The deals are live currently, so if you just wanna go over there, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. But you can see they have Mario Maker 2, Mario Party, uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, and then Yoshi's Crafted World, all of which are $20 off, so you can pick up any one of them for $40. And you can also find these in different stores like at GameStop, Target, and others as well. So they will have a physical presence. It's just Mario Day where they'll have some sales. I don't think there'll be any big announcements, nothing like that, but they will have stuff like these marked down at different stores. So swing by, maybe even some other stores will have some things set up themselves, but it does appear that Nintendo has kind of set these prices 
which means those will carry through to retail as they've announced on their site. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with the Xbox Series X first, all right? Now, the Series X sounds like a very powerful, powerful machine, right? There's on the 12 teraflops, all kinds of cool stuff with it. It's gonna be ray tracing, pretty much architecture for AMD that's not even out yet or ready or even shown off by AMD themselves. We don't really know how they're gonna do ray tracing, what their hardware solution is, but they keep saying they have it and that we'll see it later this year. And the Series X comes out later, or yeah, the Series X comes out later this year. So it's gonna be pretty cutting edge. Well, it looks like another feature was revealed by Ninja Theory to VGC, specifically about a dedicated chip for audio. So sound will be processed separate from the CPU, which is usually what we've become accustomed to now, where the CPU will use some of its resources to take care of any of the audio going through and being processed. Now, if you remember, we've, we've had consoles before that had like its own dedicated sound chip. I know it's pretty famous that that uh, the Super Nintendo used a Sony, a chip that was designed and developed by Sony. And if you open your Super Nintendo and look in the back, you'll probably see Sony written on one of the chips back there. It was, it was a pretty funny bit of history. And of course we know what happened after the 16-bit era when uh, the PlayStation showed up on the scene. But this is what Ninja Theory had to say to VGC in their interview. It's extremely exciting. We're going to have a dedicated chip to work with audio, which means we finally won't have to fight with programmers and artists for memory and CPU power. We take for granted the graphics are powered by their own video cards but in audio we haven't had anything like that now we have some power dedicated to us my favorite part by the way is that we're hearing about <laughs> about uh audio ray tracing i okay sure why i mean sony made a big deal about audio if you remember with wired they talked about like 3d sound and really mark cerny went on about that more than i thought he would it does appear that they're gonna be pushing more towards audio as well as visuals. And I think a lot of this has to do with the law of diminishing returns where it can only look so good before even the smallest details that take up a ton of GPU resources really are not seen or that obvious on screen. So we're kind of pivoting towards other things as well. I mean, after this generation, how much better do you think it's gonna get when it comes to visuals? I mean, I, I don't know. We haven't even seen a real, like a game actually being played in like at an event or in person really on these systems. And uh, I can only imagine what they will look like, but to hear about audio, them getting their own chip, it does make me believe the audio is going to be pretty awesome, but it also makes me wonder if this sound chip was necessary based on what they're also trying to do with the system. So they just kind of broke it off and threw it on the board and like, hey, now you have your own chip for audio because we need all of this for these games on the other side. So it, it's hard to say, we'll, we'll see with that. But it, I, mean, I keep hearing about this stuff with the Series X and I'm really wondering how expensive this thing is gonna be. I, I'm leaning more and more towards a $600 system, but let me know, you hear all this stuff piling up. Are they gonna get this thing out for 500? Hard to say. Next up, let's talk about Final Fantasy 15 and Google Stadia. Now, Final Fantasy 15, of course, came out close to what Stadia's launched and all that. I remember playing it and I was like, yeah, okay, this is this is this is fine, I guess. It when I played it in the browser, unfortunately for Stadia, it stuck it at 1080p on my 4K monitor, so it looked better on the Chromecast Ultra for the most part, but it still didn't run the smoothest. And and I mean, look, Final Fantasy 15 beats up even pretty nice PCs because of that engine, but there was some uh, there was some exclusive content for the Stadia version. I remember a lot of people were pretty frustrated hearing that, but after playing the challenges. Yeah, I have to say it's uh, it's not great. So I actually, because I saw this, I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't. I said, there's no way they people have got to be messing with this. So I saw it online yesterday on Twitter and I said, I, I got to check it out. So I, I signed up for another month of Stadia after I canceled it, by the way. They got me to sign up just to check this out to verify for this story. Seriously, that's how they that's how they got me. It wasn't because they showed off a good game. It was because I saw a bad game on Stadia. So Here's the clip of me playing one of the challenges. Now look, Final Fantasy 15 has a couple of challenge modes on Stadia. They have the challenge rally, which is what you're seeing, the expert duel, the endless Magitek armor, and Magnaflight. So I played the flying game as well, but specifically the challenge rally was the most eventful as I hit a series of pipes, went flying straight up into the air and bounced all over the place as physics would of course allow us to do that. The controls are not great in it, and it just feels like they threw it together at the last minute and said, here's four challenges that will stay as exclusives for Stadia. I, I, don't, I don't think they really would want that necessarily if they knew what it was going to be. I did play the, the one where you fly around and pick stuff up, and it was 
terrible. <laughs> you just fly, you run things over, and they just magically teleport into, into your ship, and then you drop it all off at the end. It's pretty bad. So I look at this, and the reason this was really funny to me, and I, I kind of thought about this, I said, do you remember how we heard about those interviews and those uh, anonymous sources from indie developers, how Stadia and Google didn't really want to give them any money. They just said, hey, come on by, drop your stuff on Stadia. I'm sure it'll do great. And now we're questioning the user base. We're questioning Google's own commitment to this platform. So I look at this and I say, well, first off, I guess people just didn't play this, the challenges. Uh, it's it's laughable. It's embarrassing. I, I Square must have taken just a tiny, tiny budget. They might have given this to like one or two people and said, hey, make it work by next week, okay? It's not good. It's a buggy mess. It, the, it feels terrible when you're actually playing it, especially the rally game. Just turning too sharp, you turn over, and sometimes you'll just bounce straight up in the air when you turn over. It's insane. It's also kind of funny. So they got me for another month just so I could verify that and capture some gameplay footage for this segment. So I'll be canceling it, I guess, soon enough. Unless something else hilarious pops up. Also, something else to point out with Stadia. They haven't really done a lot of updates with it necessarily, especially in the last month. So people are actually taking to the subreddit and releasing their own Chrome extensions to add features to it. Seriously, their Stadia version 1.4, they've named this Stadia Plus. Some of the things they've added is to force 4K resolution in the Chrome browser. They've embedded Metacritic ratings, which that's, that's a neat idea. That's, that's something we've seen people on the, uh, some of the developers on the eShop do just by putting it in the picture, right? And they have a custom Stadia UI tab. So this is all kind of being worked on open source and they're just trying to make Stadia better experience. That's Google's job, okay? <laughs> I, I know we've had fun mods and stuff in games, but this is just for the platform. Imagine people going in and just modifying the PS4 platform, like the, the OS to make it better. It's, it's, that's kind of where we are with like Stadia. I guess they opened that new studio, so maybe something will come of it in two to three years, but for now, it's just Stadia is just so strange. Uh, Anyway, if you have Stadia now, load up one of the challenge maps on uh, the rally one specifically on Final Fantasy XV. Kick back and have a good laugh because it's pretty funny. Next up, let's talk about South by Southwest as it has now been canceled due to the spread of the coronavirus and of course some of the concerns and issues around that. Well. Sonic was going to be there apparently, or at least there was going to be some sort of announcements around Sonic and maybe a new game. I'm thinking it might've been a new game, but South by Southwest was gonna take place March 16th. So what, like next week, we were going to see this event happen, 16th, I believe to the 22nd. And we would expect to see some new games there, maybe uh, some different things around merchandise, all kinds of stuff generally will be there on the panels surrounding Sonic. Well, they also put this tweet out here that you're seeing from Sonic's, uh, Hedgehog's Twitter account saying, we're sad to see the South by Southwest cancel, uh, but we respect the call and we're working hard to bring our Sonic panel content to you all in a new format this April. I'm wondering right now if Sega's even looking at this and saying, you know what? Let's just do a Sega Direct. I, they could do that. I don't think they're gonna do as many as like a Nintendo where a Nintendo might do three or four in a year. I think Sega, they could probably do a solid one every year, right? Like let's say they grab Atlas even and bring them in and they have this pretty cool 15 to 20 minute presentation to show off any new games they're working on. And maybe if they're working on some stuff for like a Nintendo or a Sony specifically, they could even bring them in and have some branding with that. There's a lot of stuff they could do with this if they wanted to. And I, I kind of prefer that. Like if they stream it and we get to just sit down and watch it with a live stream, like a Nintendo Direct or a State of Play, that's, that's kind of what I want all of this stuff to go towards, but uh, look forward to this, I guess in April, they should give us an announcement. Uh, I would say probably, probably maybe even by the time South by Southwest would have happened next week, they'll tell us. Otherwise, beginning of April, we should find out about maybe a live stream or maybe they'll hold a private, maybe they'll hold a private panel and just film that and put that up as like a pre-recorded thing. But I like the idea of doing a, a live stream Sega Direct. I think that'd be neat. And in our last bit of news, the game streaming scene has not been easy for GeForce now. Okay, Nvidia brought a service that I, I thought was pretty cool, right? It was, you get to stream the stuff you already own and you just pay Nvidia to use their servers, their data centers. And that, to me, makes sense. To a lot of people, it's like, well, I already own the game. So I'll just pay to borrow a computer, essentially, to then play that game that I own on Steam. When you use it, you sign into Steam, you activate any of the games that you do own and you just start playing them. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, not for the publishers. We've talked about Bethesda saying, no, don't want that stuff there. We got to pull that, except for Wolfenstein Youngblood. 
Weird, right? And then we've also talked about Activision pulling their own support, and now 2K has pulled support, and that is yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? Like, I thought game streaming, when this service showed up, it would have been very straightforward, okay? And it's not. It's becoming super complicated, way more than it should be, because even the publishers aren't sure how this should be going down. To us, we buy the game, we stream it, that's it, right? Well, to them, they don't want to do that because it's still a digital purchase and they see Stadia, I think, charging full price for these games, by the way, and they see Steam running their sales and their discounts and maybe we got that game for five bucks at some point. Oh, and now we're going to go back and stream it. They don't seem to like that because NVIDIA, keep in mind, it still has to launch in their own program, which then pulls the information from Steam, which then allows you to play it. So you do still go through NVIDIA's portal essentially to, to do that. And maybe there these companies are looking at that publishers and saying, well, wait a minute, you're charging a monthly fee. We want a piece of that. I Seriously, crazy, right? You, again, you figure, wow, they're opening the door for more people to show up and buy our games. Our audience is building. Well, yeah, but we want a piece of that monthly fee. What is that, $5 a month? You gotta give us like 25 cents of that, absolutely, or a dollar or two. I, I seriously think that might be an issue right now that's gonna have to be figured out by the time game streaming becomes mainstream, otherwise it probably won't. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here, this one's from Zyre now saying, I really enjoy watching this show. However, I do start to notice that they run out of news to cover each time he brings up the Nintendo Direct. Swan Wave is sounding like a broken record. He probably hasn't skipped a week since the start of the year with predicting a Nintendo Direct for the next week. Seriously, I enjoy your show, but change your tune regarding the Nintendo Directs. All right, so for anyone who's made it this far into the video, uh, there probably won't be a Nintendo Direct this week. There you go. Change the tune on it. No direct this week, is what I'm thinking. So uh, when, hard to say. Uh, before Animal Crossing, hard to say. <laughs> we could have a period of time where there are no dated Nintendo first party games for this year. How long would that period be? Maybe a couple days, but yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna say, no Nintendo Direct for this week uh, that we're in now. So we'll see about next week with Animal Crossing. Uh, before then, just look forward to Animal Crossing as well, I'll tell you now. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll end with that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to here for news. Wave. enjoyed this video, guys. Hit the like button really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's the Xbox Series X and its dedicated audio chip that Ninja Theory seems to be very excited about. Do you think we're gonna get things outside of just visuals for these systems? Like we're gonna have some really cool features. Maybe the PS5 has a few lined up. Let me know about that. Also, what about South by Southwest getting canceled due to the coronavirus and Sega maybe doing their own direct. Hmm, I, you know what, I'd be okay with that one. And then Google Stadia and Final Fantasy 15 with the challenges. Did you play it and laugh about it and just never say anything? Or is this the first time people have really even played it? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.